Hello, it's Esther. Today, I'm going to be talking about dissociation, which is a psychological phenomenon that quite a lot of people actually experience, but is often quite misunderstood. So in this video, I'll be looking at what is dissociation, what causes it, and what are the different types of dissociative experiences that people can have. I'll also be discussing how these experiences can impact a person's daily life and some tips for managing these dissociative symptoms. I myself struggle with dissociation. Um, it can range from mild to more severe symptoms such as depersonalization or derealization, and I will talk about those a bit later on. But this is a topic very close to my heart and I just really want to help share some information and a better understanding of this very very complicated <laughs> psychological process. So to begin with what is dissociation? Dissociation is actually a defense mechanism that our minds create to cope with trauma, stress and overwhelming situations. Trauma overwhelms the mind and dissociation serves as a defense mechanism to protect oneself from the full impact of trauma. This often involves a temporary disruption to a person's sense of self, consciousness, memory or perception of their surroundings. It's important to remember that dissociation isn't always a bad thing. Most people will experience low levels of dissociation in their everyday lives. For example, when you become so absorbed in a book or a film and you kind of lose awareness of your surroundings. Or I'm sure we've all had it where we're driving or walking on a very familiar route home from work and we get home and don't have much recollection of actually consciously walking yourself there. And this is a real good fundamental essence of dissociation. It's sort of the body becomes this vehicle but you're not the one driving it. So these everyday experiences are very normal and very low levels of dissociation. However, when it becomes more extreme and starts interfering with our daily lives, it can be a really challenging thing to cope with and at times a very scary experience. Now let's explore the spectrum of dissociative symptoms as it is a spectrum. And please note that everybody's experience is going to be unique, but these are just a few common manifestations that we have observed. Depersonalization. This involves a sense of detachment from oneself, where individuals may feel as if they are outside observers of their own body, thoughts or actions. They may experience a lack of connection with their physical sensations or emotions. Derealization. This refers to a feeling of detachment from the external world, where individuals perceive their surroundings as unreal, distorted, or unfamiliar. Objects or people may appear distorted, colors may seem muted, and the environment may feel dreamlike or foggy. Dissociative amnesia. This involves memory loss that cannot be explained by normal forgetfulness, and is like having memory gaps or losing chunks of time. It often occurs in relation to traumatic events or periods, where individuals may have difficulty recalling important personal information, experiences, or even their own identity. Identity alteration. In some cases, dissociation can lead to a disruption to a person's sense of self. This may involve experiencing different identities, voices, or even feeling like you're possessed by somebody else. It's so important for us to recognize that dissociation exists on a spectrum. Some people can experience extremely mild symptoms such as zoning out or having a slightly foggy brain. However, on the more severe end, people can experience extreme fragments in their own self-identity with severe dissociative amnesia where they have no recollection of what happens during their dissociative periods. However, I cannot stress this enough, everybody's experiences are valid and seeking support from friends or family or a mental health professional is always an option. My own symptoms can be very mild at times, but when I'm under extreme stress or it going through a mental health episode, my dissociative symptoms can become very extreme. In times of mild stress or overwhelm, my mind can go blank 
is if I'm no longer there and I'm no longer able to speak, move or interact with anybody. I zone out and my eyes widen and I just stare into the nothing and it can take a lot of time for me to reground myself and regain my abilities again. However, grounding techniques do work for me in this and I'm able to reground into the present moment if I'm with a safe person or a safe environment. In times of extreme stress or anxiety, I experience my more severe and debilitating experience of dissociation, which include depersonalization and derealization. These experiences cause me to feel completely disconnected from myself or the world around me. I can feel like I'm dead, walking around in a world where people can no longer see or hear me, or the other way around and everyone is dead but me. I can feel like I'm in a dream and can't wake up, like the world has ended and I'm floating in purgatory, or that my own body isn't mine. It's an extremely disorienting and scary experience. Dissociation and mental illness share a significant link. These are some of the conditions that are linked with dissociation. Dissociative disorders. Dissociative disorders, such as dissociative identity disorder, dissociative amnesia, and depersonalization or derealization disorder, exemplify the strong association between dissociation and mental illness. These disorders involve chronic and severe dissociative symptoms that significantly impact on a person's sense of self, memory, or perception. Post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD is another mental health condition closely tied to dissociation. Individuals with PTSD may experience dissociative symptoms as part of their response to a traumatic event. Dissociation can occur during flashbacks or intrusive memories where individuals may feel disconnected from present moment or re-experience the trauma as if it's happening again. Anxiety and dissociation. Anxiety disorders such as panic disorder and generalized anxiety disorder can also be linked to dissociation. Intense anxiety can trigger dissociative symptoms, leading individuals to feel detached from their surroundings or experience a sense of unreality. Borderline personality disorder. Dissociation is commonly associated with borderline personality disorder. Individuals with BPD may experience episodes of dissociation as a way to cope with intense emotions or unstable self-identity. Dissociative symptoms in BPD can range from mild attachment to more severe forms such as identity disturbances. Thankfully, there are some things that can help if you are struggling with dissociation. And many of them are really small, simple, everyday things you can do, like engaging in activities that promote relaxation, self-care and grounding techniques. Grounding techniques that help keep you in the present moment and reconnect with your surroundings can be a huge help. For example, holding a comforting object like a stress ball or a smooth stone and focusing on its texture or weight or taking slow, deep breaths, focusing on the sensation of your breath filling and leaving your body. There are also many therapeutic approaches, including trauma-focused therapies, cognitive behavioral therapy, and dialectical behavioral therapy. These can address dissociative symptoms and underlying mental health conditions. The main thing you can do is reach out to friends, family, and if you can, a mental health professional who specializes in trauma and dissociation. It's important also to know that you are not alone in this. So I hope I was able to shed some light on this really complex and misunderstood topic. And if you relate and experience dissociation yourself, I would love to hear about your experiences and whether you found anything that really helps you with your symptoms. And if you're just here to learn more and educate yourself, thank you. It is so deeply appreciated on behalf of people struggling with dissociation. And most of all, I hope that we can all practice empathy with each other because you never know what somebody's going through. Wishing you all the love and best wishes and thank you for being here, Esther.